Hello there, my name is Tony. I am a video editor with 13 years of experience working alongside Thomas Frank and Standard Studios. Today, I wanna talk about a couple of things that I feel you should learn before you start video editing. Now, you don't have to necessarily know all of these things, prior to video editing, but I think this is gonna help you not only understand and have a better idea of stuff that we think about during the production process as well as the editing process, but also just to help you kind of more find your way into the direction that you wanna take your editing. And I do wanna give a disclaimer that all of these things are nuanced, like there's a lot of little things that go into a lot of this, but having a general understanding and like a baseline understanding of some of these things is gonna put you in a way better position than starting in blindly. So the first thing I wanna talk about are resolutions and frame rates. Video resolutions and frame rates are important to think about because whether you're working locally or remotely, there are a couple things to consider. First is ingesting or downloading footage because that will take time and you wanna have your best estimation for that. Different media does use different frame rates and sometimes there's reasons why some things are recorded in certain frame rates that would be good to know. And lastly, you wanna render things out at the actual resolution and frame rates that the main project should be set to that way to avoid a lot of problems. So when it comes to resolutions, there are different resolutions for different media for maybe a website that you're uploading to, but I wanna talk about what I consider to be like the bases of resolutions and like the most common ones. So first one is gonna be 720p, and that has a resolution of 1280 by 720. And keep in mind that this is width times height. Next, you're gonna move up to HD 1080p, which is a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And next is 4K with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. So now that we have our common resolutions being used nowadays, let's move on to common frame rates. And with those, we're gonna start with the first one, which is gonna be 24 FPS or frames per second. This is more commonly used in a lot of media, but this is also used in a lot of films. After that, it's 30 frames per second, which is more commonly used in TV shows. And lastly, 60 frames per second. And this one you can use interchangeably because you want to be capture, for example, gaming footage in 60 FPS because that is the desirable frame rate for the most smoothness. But you can also use 60 FPS footage to create really cool slow motion shots. And there are ways that you can check the resolution and the frame rate in which you are recording in, such as, let's say, for example, you are recording locally. You can actually see that right here it says 3840 by 2160 and I know that's 4K with the frame rate of 23.98 or you can just round it up to 24 frames a second. Now, if you are working remotely and you got the footage, you can actually check the properties of that footage that you received. You can just import the footage to your respective editing software. And I work in Premiere, so I'm actually able to see the metadata and all the information about the footage I received right there. Uh, but your mileage may vary depending on what you're using. I haven't used every editing software in the world, okay? So I don't know how to check every single one. So now the biggest thing about FPS that I want you to take away from all of this too is when you are creating like, let's say your project or your sequence, whatever the fancy word is gonna be, you wanna make sure that you also export things at the resolution of that project as well as the frame rate. Because if you're gonna render, let's say something that was shot in 1080p, but in 24 frames a second, and you go to export it in 30 frames a second without realizing you did that, you're gonna run into some weird artifact thing and things are just not gonna come out good. So knowing how to export these is very important. Now let's move over to working remotely and why all of this matters. The biggest thing about this is the fact that the higher resolution you go, the bigger the file sizes of these projects are gonna be. And while there are compression softwares to help ease the burden of this, no matter what, you still are gonna have to deal with downloading and uploading the footage when you are done with it or receiving it. So now let's say you're working remotely, you have 10 clips to download and one of them is already one gigabyte big. In 2021 in America, the average internet speed was 99.3 megabits a second. Now that one gigabyte download that you have to get is gonna take roughly a minute and 30 seconds at those speeds. And if you have 10 clips to download, then you're looking at roughly 13 minutes to download everything. And that is just in 1080p. Now imagine you have more footage to work with that's in 4K and that's a lot more data to download. All of this is something that you're gonna have to factor into your time. And that is the biggest factor with working remotely 
is the time because either a lot of people don't want to pay you because of sitting on that computer and downloading the footage is not what they're paying you to do technically. So they don't want you to add that to the invoice. Instead, they only want to pay you for your actual editing time. So you have to factor a lot of these things in. Hey, post-production Tony here. So another thing I forgot to mention is that your upload speeds also take a lot of time. And generally upload speeds are way slower than the download speeds. So to use me as an example here, I've done this for years now. I have one gigabyte of download at my place. And then I also get unlimited data because I paid for that. Unfortunately though, because it's not fiber optic, I still only get about 25 megabit upload speeds. So even though I have a gigabyte download, I only have 25 megabits a second to work with to upload, which factors into the time of me being able to deliver something. So all of this is stuff that we got to factor in and it's something to discuss with the client. And what I would advise for anyone that could afford it and can have the privilege of having it in wherever you are located, wherever you live, to pay for higher internet speeds to just help ease the burden of having to deal with downloading so many things. So now with resolutions out of the way, same with the frame rates and also with stuff to consider when working remotely. The last thing I wanna talk about is which editing software that you should start with. So if you're gonna to look to being an internet video editor, so you wanna work with creators, you wanna work with companies that want to post social media stuff, the softwares that I would recommend you at least trying to learn right away would be Premiere, Final Cut Pro, or DaVinci Resolve. As far as I'm aware of, those are the most commonly used for social media slash internet content creators. And I advise you, if you are looking to work with people or companies online to start with those, if you yourself though wanna be your own creator and make your own thing, I don't care what you use because at the end of the day, a lot of editing techniques is what is more important than the software you use. And I also understand that not everyone can afford things. I, I get that we all have come from different backgrounds. So do not be discouraged if you cannot afford, you know, the fancy software just yet. Use whatever you can use to just get your hands dirty. Now, I don't come from a traditional media world, but I have friends in it. I even have some friends in some pretty high companies. And from what my understanding is, if you wanna work in traditional media, and that is stuff that I consider to be films, movies, animation companies, uh, and even television, then you might wanna learn either Premiere Pro, some Final Cut Pro, but the biggest one is gonna be Avid or the Avid. A lot of people like to say, do you know the Avid, which is interesting how that became a thing, but yes, the Avid. Now, to my understanding, Avid is the most prominent video editing software in traditional media, and it's probably because when they first started, Avid has been around for years, so it's probably easy for them to not have to transition out of it. So in level of priority, I would highly advise you to first start with Avid, next go down to Premiere Pro, and then finally end up at Final Cut Pro. And again, I'm not saying any of this is definite. It's just my understanding as of today. Now, a huge resource that I would love for you guys to take away from this and to learn from is the actual workflow guide that Frame.io made that Tom and I read like from start to finish two years ago to give us the most understanding of video production and things that we wanna think about to help our production and make things a lot better. I will have that link down below. So if you are interested, check it out. Again, it's, it's a free thing. You're gonna learn so much. I cannot advise you enough to read this. And with everything that Tom and I do, we want to give the most value to people because for us, it, it is very important for us to put out information that we find valuable, that people can learn from. And the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is if you are a content creator looking to manage all of your channels, or if you're like me and you are a video editor and you want software to help keep you organized throughout the entire production process, I highly advise you guys to check out Creators Companion. Creators Companion is a Notion template that Tom created that helps run our entire production. We use it to run his Thomas Frank main channel, the Thomas Frank Explains channel. I use it to run these videos to keep myself organized. And I think the biggest testament that I can give to this is when it comes to managing our production workflow, we use this every day to make sure everything gets streamlined. My favorite thing as an editor in using this though is the fact that in every single video project that I'm working on, we have a B-roll section where I can easily tag things, keep them organized so I know in which order I need to edit things in. I have timestamps whenever I need them. And the fact that I can just keep this open on the side of me when I'm editing and just take a look, see what I need and just plug it in is probably the best thing that I've learned and gotten from this.
If you guys are interested in giving this a shot or at least taking a look at it to see what we have to offer, go ahead down to the link or go to tonyrsantos.com cc and learn more about it. I really hope you guys take a look at it, but above all, thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in following me on social media, I am on Twitter. That's where I advise you to follow me just because I try to be more active on there than anything else. But aside from that, leave down in the comment section at least two questions of things you have questions about. And I will do my best to either answer them in the comment section or if it's a really good topic, I will make a whole video on it. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you learned something new here and I'll see you guys in the next one.